everyone. Back here from my pack here. Happy Labor Day. Um, Labor Day 2022. All right, so I'm in my garden. I decided to do some cleanup today. Guys, it's been hell hot for the past several months. I mean, literally, heat index over 100 degrees every day. So my garden is a bit neglected, but I started doing some cleaning up today. And I said, you know, let me take you guys along so you guys can also clean up your trees. So I started off with my papayas. So what I'm gonna do today is go through my garden and do some cleanup and I'm gonna show you what to compost and what not to compost. So, so, so. So first of all, we started off with my papaya tree. Um, there were several leaves that actually had disease on there. Whenever you, you clean up anything that has disease, do not compost these. So there are healthy leaves and, and some diseased leaves, but because some of the, even the healthy leaves, you can see that they, they have the beginning of, of disease. So anything with disease goes straight into the trash, not into the compost. Um, another tip I wanted to, I'm just gonna leave it here, but I'll come, come back and collect it and move it outside of the garden. Another thing I wanted to point out when, um, when pruning papaya trees, as you can see, I had cut all the lower branches. You want the tree to focus on fruit production. So here you can see that there are some several fruits coming out. These flowers will also become fruit. So you wanna you wanna focus more on fruit production than leaf production. So what I did was I cut all the leaves below the fruit. Also, you can cut the extra leaves that don't have a fruit above it. So the reason I do that especially for my trees for some reason I realized that the papayas when they get heavy sometimes th these little stems break so I always I never I stopped touching the, the leaf right b b below it because it happened to be recently the papaya got to probably twice its size I cut the leaf that was supporting the papaya and it broke so one thing I'll do is cut the leaves that are support I do not cut the leaves that are supporting a, a papaya all these excess leaves here I'll cut these excess leaves because there's no papaya going above it. Let's cut this one here. And I'll leave the leaves on the top. You see there are still fruits coming out here, so I'll leave the leaves on the top. So that's enough for this tree. So these are going to go into the garbage because these have disease or the beginning of disease. All right, so let's move along. To keep your trees at optimal health, you go through and you cut any yellowing leaves. So here I have my cocoa. My cocoa is going nicely, but some of the leaves are yellowing. Something like this, you can remove the yellowing leaves so that the, um, it focuses the energy on the healthy leaves. But these are healthy leaves. These just turned yellow. There, there's no disease on these leaves. So I'm gonna compost right in place. These leaves, I have all the nutrients from the cocoa and it's going to go right back into the cocoa. I'm going to drop those right there, chop and drop right in place. The mango is looking good. Moving on to my mulberry. I had given this one a dr drastic chop back a few weeks ago and you can see it has already pr produced a lot of mulberry. That was a tip from my subscriber Diane. She told me, you know, if I cut it back it will produce more and you can see it has produced. But it does have that yellow, that, that same um, leaf spot disease. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to cut this back anymore because I've already cut it back. I've already cut it back drastically. You can see where I cut it just a few weeks ago here. And it all, it's already sp springing back. But I'm going to go through with this and I'm going to spray it. What I've started spraying with, um, I made a mixture of, it's like, like a gallon of water. I put like a cup of um, or half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and I put um, I think a tab tablespoon of neem oil, shake it up and then I spray and I find that it's very effective because the neem oil will kill any pests and then the hydrogen peroxide ki kills any fungal disease. So that's been working pretty well for me. So I'm going to go through it and um, trim this, I mean give this one a good spray. Cassavas are looking good, everything else is looking good. Um, let's move on to my bananas. Oh, and on the way to the Bahamas, um, the bananas, 
my um, this is getting a, my frangipani. You can see it's getting that same leaf spot disease. So I need to go through and spray it. But I'm gonna remove these all these lower leaves that are diseased. I'm gonna cut these off, and I'm gonna get, put these into the garbage because these are diseased. The reason you don't want to put anything diseased into the compost, you might say, hey, but Patrice is going to break out into soil. But yeah, that's, that soil is going to be what's feeding your plants. So you don't want anything with disease to end up in the soil because that, that's going to end up on the new plants in your plants. So these are going to go straight into the garbage. I'm just going to rest this here so I can remember to pick it up. So next, we're moving on to our um, bananas. Before I go any further, let me pause for a second. I'm going to get a cotton ball. Um, what is very important is when you're moving from a diseased tree to a, 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 a tree that's healthy and you're going to do trimming, you want to make sure that you don't take this disease that pass from one tree to the next tree because that's going to cause this tree to now become unhealthy. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to get a hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to wipe the blade. Then I'm, I'm going to show you what to do with the banana tree. All right, so I got my hydrogen peroxide. It's just regular hydrogen peroxide you get for 80 cents in the, in the supermarket. Um, gonna wet the sponge well. And I'm just gonna wipe the blades. Nothing fancy, just wiping the blades. Um, the hydrogen peroxide will kill any fungus or anything on it. So that's very important. That's a very important step. Sometimes you wonder, hey, how did a disease pass from one plant to the next? This, this is one way that it can plant, pass, so making sure that my blades are clean. Also, before I started, I also made sure my blades were clean, so it, that's a good step to, to follow. All right, so now for the banana trees. I do have a video that I did on um, getting bananas to produce a lot and how to multiply bananas. You guys can go back and check that out. But for this banana tree, you can see the branches go all the way down to the ground. Um, one thing about any plant that goes all the way to the ground, it's always good to lift it. Lift, take, take away the first, the, the lower half of um, the branches because when they, when they sit on the ground, first of all, that's when it can introduce disease to the plant. So I'm gonna reduce these, um, I'm, I'm gonna remove these lower branches, but these are healthy leaves. So you can chop and drop, you can leave them right in place. These will break down and feed the banana plants. So I'm gonna remove this. And also you can see I have one, two, three bananas coming up under this one. That's not bad right now, but I think I'm gonna remove one of these. The biggest one here, you can see this is a sword banana. You know it's a sword swords based on the shape of the leaves the sword bananas are the ones that grow the fastest and produce the most um versus uh a sucker a sucker banana so i'm going to remove this and i'm going to put it by the chicken coop because i'm trying to create a space for them that has a lot of shade and before you know it that banana will become its own grove of bananas so i'm going to remove these lower branches here and plus also by removing the lower branches that is also um, forcing the bananas to grow. It will grow more and produce fruit because the whole idea about having bananas is not having a whole bunch of leaves, which although the leaves are beautiful, you want them to grow and produce fruit. So when you, when you prune bananas, you should never leave. I usually prune back to like five or six leaves. Right now we have about 10 leaves. So I'm gonna take one more off Mm. yes there we go all those leaves bananas are very heavy feeders so you always want to fertilize them you can even pile up some people pile up food scraps i don't like to do like kitchen scraps unless it's just vegetables because first of all i like it to look good and also i don't want to attract any more raccoons and animals so i think this is good here i can remove these are become becoming a little sunburnt I can remove these. Okay, so I think that's that's good enough for today's pruning. I don't want to prune back much more. What I can do in, in a few weeks, I can come and prune back these other two leaves that are yellowing. But I've removed 10. About No, I've removed about seven leaves. I don't want to put a plant into shock, so that's enough for, for today's pruning on that plant. 
So that shows you what to compost and what not to compost. That's a healthy banana and I'm composting those leaves. I'm gonna do the same here. So this is gonna force the plant to grow more. Now that it's not focusing so much energy on these leaves. All right. Getting rid of a few more leaves. This one actually has a bigger sucker. This one has a pretty big sucker. Um, come on this side of the camera so I can show them the suckers. Come on this side. So if you see under here, this one has a very big sucker. This tree, this sucker is like two feet tall. So this is actually a great one. This is the one I'm gonna transplant. And this banana has one, two, one, two, let me see. So it only has two suckers? It had some before, more before. Hmm. One, two, only two suckers. But I'm gonna remove that one and plant it by the chicken coop. All right, so let's see what else we can prune. Pruning keeps your plants healthy. Pruning keeps your plants healthy. All right, so here's a papaya. This one hasn't started bearing yet, but it is a female. I see here that it has several female blossoms. So this one, even though it's very young, this one is gonna be bearing very soon. It is already blossoming. That means within a few weeks, I'm gonna have papaya on this one. These leaves are healthy, so I'm gonna chop, I can chop and drop it, or I can put it in the compost, either one. For now, I'm gonna leave it here um, and see what else I have to compost. As you guys can see, I have a lot of weeding to do. Um, these are called Bidens. In Jamaica, we call this, I uh, can't remember the name we call this in Jamaica. But this is actually a wild weed, but it actually has tons of medicinal value. So I haven't pulled these out yet. They're popping up all over the garden because I want to research more and then decide if I'm going to take it, dry it and make it into teas or if I'm, I'm going to compost it. So um, I need to research this one more. And I know you guys probably know this one. Um, so if you guys have suggestions on how you use it, if you've already used it, let me know how you, how you use it. But this is like a common weed in Jamaica and in the, in the tropical areas. And I have them popping up all over my garden. All right, so my cassavas are looking amazing. Everything else is looking amazing. My chai tree spinach has a few little yellowing leaves at the bottom. I'm just gonna go through and cut those off. Well, I did tell you guys how hot it was, right? And I was not lying. I, the camera literally just shut off on me twice. I literally just went through and trimmed up a couple more things and I've been talking to myself. So let me just show you real quick what I did, then I'll end this video. Guys, it's hot and the camera does not like the heat. This phone is really annoying me. Um, it's telling me the device is too hot, but I'm gonna try and go real fast. Um, this papaya was one of the smallest papayas in the garden. It's now one of the biggest. It has the most blossoms, the most papaya on it. Um, I just went through and chopped all the lower branches. These leaves were actually healthy. I'm gonna put those in the compost. And then right beside it is my banana tree. That is, this was actually so small. You see that little pink flag? This is a banana tree that was so small that it didn't have any, it didn't even have one leaf. It didn't, it was just like a piece of a root. Now it's the biggest banana and it has three suckers and they look like they're gonna be sword suckers coming up. So I just chopped the lower branches because these branches, these leaves were all the way to the ground, literally. So you can see where I just cut the lower branches and you can see where this banana is all the way up in the air. So I'm super excited. It's supposed to be a very special banana. I have no idea what kind of banana it is, but I'm super excited to get this banana um, trimmed up and hopefully get some bananas soon. Let me see if I can find a water sucker to show you what it looks like. Hey, Mr. Pinky. Hey, Red. You're going to allow us to come check out your garden? You're going to allow us to come in? Mr. Pinky is recovering nicely. His face looks a little bit messed up, but he's cockadoodle doing and he's he's doing good. So I think I have a yes, I have a water sucker back here. So this is a very, very, very special 
banana to me. This is a but this is a water sucker. This is my mother, -in -law, my beautiful, beautiful mother, the wonderful, loving mother-in-law passed away a couple years ago. She gave me my first banana sucker, my first banana tree that became like a forest of banana trees. And she passed away a couple years ago. So this is a sucker from her original banana tree. But this is a water sucker. So you see the difference in the leaves. With the ones that I show you, the sword suckers, um, they had a very long straight leaf that looks almost like a sword, the shape of a sword. The water suckers have more rounded leaves. So this is a water sucker. It will eventually bear. The good thing is that the water suckers can produce other bananas, it can produce sword suckers. So I'm gonna allow this to grow and this can produce sword suckers and then the sword suckers of course they give you bananas faster and they grow bigger quicker so but all bananas are great all the chicken manure and um the poop and everything from the chickens will help to feed these this banana um I also stuck some sweet potatoes back here as you can see I just stuck a couple of sweet potatoes and french thyme back here just to give them more ears to hide and more ears to be Anyway, um, this was supposed to be a very quick video. It's getting a little bit long. I'm going to go through and do some more trimming up throughout my garden. But just wanted to give you a really quick update. Um, it's fall and now is really a great time to do your trimming back. A lot of, a lot of the fruit trees are no longer fruiting. Um, so it's a great idea. Hi! It's a good idea to do some, um, some trimming right now to get your fruits production going speaking of fruit production look at my star fruit it's doing really really good till next time guys let's go plant a seed today let's go do some fall cleanup let's do some pruning let's do some mulching and weeding but let's get started guys till next time from mr pinky miss reds and myself and storm. Bye now.